So here at the left side of the feeder house, we've got a lot of the shields pulled off and opened up to see everything. Now, your machine may look a little bit different than what we have here. There's several different options, whether it's the feeder house drive, uh, some of the drum adjustments, but at least for this variable speed drive, Jeremiah, you wanna to talk to us a little bit about this? Yeah, so this combine's equipped with high torque variable speed. This has basically been a option on combine since, well, 20 series combines. Um, concept is still the same. They have beefed it up throughout the years. Um, one thing you want to do is these two grease circs that are on the variable shiv itself, those are 10 hour grease circs. So you can over grease those. So typically when you grease it, what you want to do is you want to have the feeder slowed down all the way. So this front shiv all the way together, um, give each one of them zerks about five pumps. Also <clears throat> on the variable uh, shiv machines, a lot of people overlook it, but there are two grease circs, 50 hour grease circs tucked in on the back side of the drive pulley. Um, another thing to look when you're getting ready for the year, grease it, <clears throat> have it slid all the way together. Check your j a gap according to spec, whether it's a very a high torque or a standard torque uh, variable shiv, that gap adjustment's a little bit different. So um, look into your operator's manual to make sure you have the correct gap. To adjust that gap, we don't want to be adjusting off of this pulley here. To adjust this gap, what you'll want to do is loosen these bolts here and run this strap up and down. Um, adjust, push this out to make it the gap larger move it ahead to bring the shiv closer together. Um, at a standard stationary speed, you should be running 510 to 520 feeder RPM when this machine is slowed all the way down. Um, would be the same option on your multi-speed, five-speed feeder house. Uh, first gear is at 510, 520 as well. Another option that this machine doesn't have, there are a few out in our area, is your fixed speed. With the fixed speed, you're still running the same reverser that we have on all of our machines. It's just all you have now is a V-belt that runs all the way to the back and it stays at 520, 510, 520 all the time. When you're going through that too, you're gonna to wanna to check your reverser oil level. I strongly recommend changing the reverser oil level every year, especially when you're running larger heads. There's a lot of power running through that gearbox. When you check that oil level on that gearbox, you'll want the feeder house level and pull your dipstick, remove your dipstick here. When changing and servicing this gearbox, you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind on the high torque variable speed, there is an oil cooler up, located up underneath the feeder house. When you drain just the reverser, you're not draining any of the oil that's in that, re in that oil cooler. Make sure you remove the um, hoses from that oil cooler so you get all the oil out. So you're not running any of that old contaminated dirty oil in the machine. When you fill it, same thing. Fill it to spec. There is a little scavenge pump, a little pump inside that uh, reverser gearbox. You'll wanna run it for a little bit so that oil gets pumped back through that cooler. Run it for a little bit, check it again, add it. Do that a couple times until you get uh, a good oil level. As far as operationally speaking, especially with a corn head, that's where this adjustment can really come in handy. Uh, it, this is gonna determine the speed of your row units. So how fast it's pulling that stock down. If you're chopping, how fast that chopping blade is spinning. Uh, so there's always a trade-off like any adjustment on a combine. The slower we run this, the less ear bounce, the less butt shelling, the more kernel retention we're gonna see in the combine. The trade-off is we may bring in a little bit more trash because that stock is able to get higher up into the row unit and more leaf material might get into the combine. So early in the season, you can probably get away with a little bit higher speeds, but as the season goes on, that corn really dries down. Good idea to slow this down to keep those kernels retained and going into the combine. That and you won't get the stock processing, you know, like you would normally do. You know, if you, were, if you were running it at a higher RPM, you get one, but the downfall is you exchange one for the other. Do you want good stock processing or do you want your head, header loss? So it's one or the other. So depending on time of year, 
Yeah, kind of and cool it's just a visual thing yeah. a lot of times. What does it look like on the ground? How much is coming in that auger trough into the combine? And you can see pretty clearly from the cab while you're going if you're butt shelling yep. or not. So, yep. And with the variable speed, uh, it's the same as uh, your five speed as well. Uh, that that is controlled with your re, uh, reel raise and lower switch inside the cab. Um, with your five-speed multi-touch, we'll touch on that here in a little bit as well, is you just have basically a five-speed power shift transmission under the cab, where here you'll move it and adjust it. One thing to watch, if you, if you have a hard time holding speed, uh, if you bump it up in corn, uh, soybeans, wheat, typically it's easy to hold speed because you run it all the way down, all the way down slow. But if you have a hard time holding speed, there's a few things that could be an issue. Um, one is inside your driven up here, there is a small piston. Those seals can go out. Uh, when they do go out, it causes internal leakage. It'll settle down. The other is, um, basically 60 series or newer combines, or even if you have a 50 series that's had a retrofit kit on it, um, there is a little check valve inside your single point connector. That check valve can fail, causing it not to hold speed as well, um, which can be kind of a pain uh, when you're going through harvesting. Uh, you can be processing the stocks really good. Next thing you know, you look at it and you have a lot of tall stocks on because your feeder house slowed down without you noticing it. But since you're talking about the multi-coupler or the single point, uh, just a quick thing, it's a good idea anytime you do switch heads just to keep this clean, both on the combine side and on the header side. Now, some of these newer heads uh, are starting to come with a nine pin connector like you're seeing on X9. So there are kits depending on which, which headers you're running uh, to run the 31 or run the nine, which on newer machines is just tucked right back there you can actually mount that nine pin or, or excuse me mount one or the other up here to go back and forth um, but talk to your dealer talk to your salesman uh, pretty easy whether you run a nine pin or 31 pin to equip this combine to run either one yeah all, all of your um, hydraulic your hd heads are going to need to have the iso the nine pin iso connector to make them work um, you can get by with corn heads still running through your uh, normal connector, but uh, if you're going to run an HD head, you're going to have to use that. Um, if you do have an older machine and you do want to put on a hinge flame, hinge frame draper head, you can through parts uh, aftermarket, you can order the kit to convert your machine over to the nine pin ISO. Yep. And now you tell me, Jeremiah, I've, I've heard you don't want to use brake clean on this. It can eat away at those gaskets in there. Yeah, Any so basically that? all it's in these seals, it's uh, a Teflon, nylon type seal. A couple things you want to watch, like you said, make sure you wipe it clean. Brake cleaner though is, yeah, it cleans it fast. You can just spray it on there and walk away and throw it on. But what happens is it dries a lot of them seals out. and. What will happen too, if you're not wiping them clean properly, when you're latching them, the head side that goes on there, that seal can nick part of this, uh, like say if there's a rock or a chunk or something in there and it'll cut that seal on the head side. Well then once that happens, you just have oil running all the way down. And especially, well, if whether no matter what drive you had, but especially it affects the variable speed is now you have oil running on your variable speed drive belt. So you're not gonna be able to hold speed correctly. Your belt's gonna slip. You're gonna damage your belt. You're gonna damage your shiv. Another tip, uh, if you're going by the operator's manual, they do say to actually shut the machine down whenever you're hooking or unhooking the single point, uh, mostly for the electronic side. So there's no surges and voltages, anything like that, just to protect your electrical system. I know people get in a hurry with harvest and switching heads and needing to get everything done, but just a good idea for the longevity of your machine to shut the machine down real quick when you're hooking or unhooking this part to ensure that, that stays, everything works for a long time. We were talking earlier, Nick, about the, your feeder drum stop height. Recently, they changed that feeder drum stop height from having an adjustable handle here to being fixed. Uh, a few reasons for that was a lot of people leave it on top anyway. Um, also, too, it's to kind of help increase the lifespan of your feeder floor, uh, feeder chain components, things like that. 
if you have a later machine with the fixed feeder feeder house drum height, you can order the components to make it adjustable through parts if need be. Yeah. yeah. So typically, you know, if you've got an older machine that does have that adjustment, uh, the rule of thumb I've always used is: Are you cutting in rocky conditions or not when you're harvesting soybeans? If you're worried about rock ingestion, having that drum down. By the operator's manual, they do recommend that, and mostly for that rock protection. It'll stop that rock uh, here at the drum, make it more likely that the slip clutch goes off there rather than ingesting the rock further into the machine. A lot of our guys in our area don't worry about the rock so much or don't have rocks on their ground, so they just run it up, up all season long and get along just fine. If you also think about that in terms of capacity, having a larger opening to take a higher volume of crop flow, that's gonna help with that. Uh, if for whatever reason you're in really, really low yielding light crops and you do have that adjustment, it might help a little bit to put that down, but for 95% of customers in our area, run it up, leave it up and you'll be just fine. Yep, um, with being on feeder drum then too, another thing to check and make sure you have adjusted properly is your, feet, your feeder chain tension. Um, we now, we've had it since the S-Series came out, but you now have a nice spring that you can use with a gauge. Make sure that when you're tightening the gauge up, the end of the washer is flush with the end of the gauge. Another thing to look at, and I've seen this happen before, where a customer will call because their feeder house is noisy or it's jumping sprockets. It's getting out of time, it's changing. Uh, they look at their tension, the tension is adjusted where it needs to be. However, if you look in at the feeder house adju adjustment here, there is only a slotted, a small area for adjustment. So if that chain stretches enough and, you, and it's to the point where you need to be removing a link, it might look like it's tight out here, but actually physically it's not. Um, so if you are running into times where, especially in corn, we see it a lot, the chain starting to jump, get out of time, uh, inspect and make sure that you have adjustment left on your uh, tensioner.